Okay, next reflex gets a, just a little bit more complicated. Um, this is called the withdrawal reflex. So this is the idea of when you touch something painful, you withdraw from it. Um, this is also called the flexor reflex because it involves um, a flexing to move away from it. We're typically looking at the, the arm um, pulling back. We have flexion of the elbow in that case. So similar idea here is the previous picture with the knee jerk reflex. Um, I've got the spinal cord and kind of what's happening to the muscles. In this case, the hand is grabbing a hot pan and it's a reflex. You don't have to think about it in your brain um, to let go of that very quickly when you touch that. So let's look at how that happens. Um, it's gonna be similar to our knee jerk, but have um, a little bit more complexity. We wanna be able to have not only the biceps brachii contract quickly um, and brachialis maybe, um, but the, the muscle, the antagonist muscles, the tricep on the back there, we want that to um, not contract. We want that to be relaxed. So this would be by our biceps brachii contracts. This is our goal, right? Um, triceps brachii relax. That's going to equal flexion. Okay, how do we do that? Um, we're going to have a sensory neuron to start with. Um, sensory information is going to be pain, so there's going to be nociceptors that detect pain um, or heat. This is free nerve endings either way. Probably both are being signaled here, pain and heat. Um, that information is going to be carried to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And it's actually going to stop then at that dorsal horn. Um, I'm actually going to jump to the motor neuron before we do interneurons that are going to be involved in the spinal cord. So let's jump over. I'm going to draw for you um, first the motor neuron that goes to the biceps brachii. So that's in black here. To the biceps brachii. Um, and then we've got a second motor neuron that's going to innervate the triceps. Right, and this one can only release acetylcholine. They both can. That's all that motor neurons can do. So we have to inhibit this motor neuron if we want the triceps to be relaxed. So we got to find a way to, at the same time, from the same stimulus, excite that black motor neuron and inhibit the blue motor neuron. To do this, we're going to have some interneurons. So this initial sensory neuron is going to synapse on an interneuron, which is going to synapse directly on um, one of those motor neurons and have a second little branch. Um, it's going to have two separate places where the axon terminals can reach to. So this is an interneuron. it's going to be excitatory. So for the bicep motor neuron, we've got excitatory um, sensory neuron, excitatory interneuron, and then excitement of the biceps brachii. However, we need to add in some inhibition here. So there's going to be a second interneuron that connects to just that second motor neuron. This interneuron, do you think is excitatory or inhibitory? We've got to change the sign. We've got to inhibit. So when that red sensory neuron stimulates that blue interneuron, the more that that happens, the more this inhibitory interneuron is stimulated. So we've got plus going there plus, plus. The more that inhibitory interneuron is stimulated though, the more inhibition happens here. So we're inhibiting this motor neuron. That's how we have 
inhibition of contraction, allowing for maximal quick flexion away from this painful and dangerous, um, you know, possibly dangerous stimulus. So in this case, we've got this more complex processing in the central nervous system to allow for a quicker response in this case. Stretch reflex doesn't have, um, can't need to have or have that processing. Okay, same image shown here um, with this kind of some color coding with the image not drawn by me. The other thing this image shows is that that interneuron um, well, both those interneurons within the spinal cord also send information to other areas of the body. Um, so that's important because, well, first of all, you know that you're aware when you have a reflex happen. So this is allowing for awareness, um, even though the process is autonomic, um, sorry, automatic, <laughs> um, we're aware it's happening. It also can allow the rest of your body to respond. Right, so there's other things you might um, be aware of. It allows you to respond and go get ice. Um, so that's that's going to be important. Um, and that's the last thing for this week is a little bit more about that. So the role of that higher brain, those higher brain regions. So this first image is again showing the same thing. Example of the withdrawal reflex. Another image of it, another example in this case, hot iron. Hot iron. Um, quickly pull away from that. Um, the signals that are traveling, and this one actually doesn't show it as well as that previous one, um, not only information is going to the brain, but information is coming from the brain. So there can be signals coming from the brain that can cause a person to modify their their actions. So an example of this is in this bottom example here, this person is holding a bowl of hot soup. That person might be motivated to not drop that soup. Um, so our brain can override this reflex to prevent the person from dropping the cup. That could be dangerous. Maybe you actually, in some cases, you might burn yourself. Um, but it is a way that our, we can, you know, mind over matter kind of thing. We can, can override these reflexes. Again, um, the information sent to the brain, brain's awareness of this might be helpful for then finding a place to put the soup down, going to get ice, moving away from the hot object, whatever else might need to happen to long-term protect yourself.